How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. These are XTAR's lithium ion AA batteries. Lithium AA batteries has never been that mainstream. They used to have a lot of AA batteries in nickel metal hydride. And these batteries, of course, cost a bit more than alkaline, but they are best suited for high drain devices. When you look at this, you might be tempted to replace all of your AA alkaline batteries and be done with alkaline so you never have to buy it again. But there is a cost involved. The most cost effective way to use these kind of batteries is only replace them with the lithium AA if you absolutely need it. For example, if you find yourself having to replace AA alkaline batteries in a toy RC car all the time, that's a great candidate. If you use a flashlight that uses AA alkaline batteries, that's a really good candidate as well. Many, many devices has lithium ion batteries built in already. You don't have to buy AA and put them in yourself. But this is a really old toothbrush over here. It's intended for you to put AA alkaline batteries, but if you wanna make it rechargeable, you get the XTAR lithium ion batteries, put it in, it's high drain, you turn it on, it works. So how do they do this? They put some fancy circuitry in there to mimic an alkaline cell. Internally, it's still gonna have a higher voltage and it does some conversion and voila, you got 1.5 volts at the output. If you look at the output curve, it's mostly 1.5 volts from 100% capacity all the way down to 5% capacity. And all of a sudden it drops down to 1.2 volts. This is great because a lot of devices that uses battery, when it drops down to that much, it will slow down a little bit to let you know that the battery is almost dead. However, I actually think they should make it more like alkaline batteries or nickel metal hydrides because when you change the voltage ever so slightly this is an indication of how much capacity is left in the battery if you only output 1.5 volts all the time you don't know if it's at 100 percent or 5 percent they should probably start off at 1.6 volt and then as the battery drains go all the way down to maybe 1.4 volts another thing with these batteries is even though there's lithium ion in it you can't really plug it to a lithium ion battery charger it's just not compatible because there's a voltage conversion circuitry in here already you have to use one of these XTAR chargers for these batteries. This charger can charge 1.5 volt lithium ion or 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride, double A or triple A batteries. The input is actually five volt, two amps. Look at this is very interesting. The output is 1.5 volt lithium ion, five volt, 0 0.5 amps. So it's doing something very interesting here. These guys normally output 1.5 volts, but when you put it in this charger, it's gonna charge it at five volts. So that's how they're able to get the charge time down to 2.9 hours. The newer battery chargers all have this hole in the back so you can put your finger in here, push your batteries out. And I like how this one, you can go all the way to the edge. Some of the chargers only put a hole for the middle batteries. The charger itself is consuming 0.14 watts. When it's solid red, it's charging it and it's using 1.62 amps right now. Two amps would be maximum or 10 watts. Note that the voltage at the battery is 4.48 volts. However, when you take it off and you measure it, it's only 1.52 volts. Typical alkalines have 2.85 amp hours of capacity. When you go to nickel metal hydrides, it only has two amp hours of capacity. However, even though it has less capacity, it can run high drain devices for longer. Because for alkalines, if you draw too much current out of it, the internal resistance increases, it ends up drooping the voltage and you can't actually draw that much energy out of them. So alkalines are really good for very low drainage type of devices like remote controls. These lithium ions have a little bit more than the nickel metal hydrides at 2.5 amp hours. They also can do very high drain at close to two amps. So you have a little bit more performance when going to these lithium ones. When it's green, it's ready to charge. You can plug in your batteries and it will show these red lights means it's charging. But if your batteries are really dead, they have like a trickle charging reactivation function. So you can plug it in and it will flash red slowly. If it fails to revive your cell, it's gonna flash red quickly. The whole thing charges via USB-C. What's not mentioned in the manual is these green blinking LEDs inside. I'm gonna drain this entire pack. The output is 6.5. 0.05 volts. It's drawing 1.3 amps right now. It's drooped a little bit at 5.67 volts. The light has turned off, but it's still drawing 160 milliamps. Zero, zero, 1.1. 
zero. So one of them has a tiny bit more capacity than the other ones. And what ends up happening is this one tries to charge back the other ones. So I could just try to drain the single battery. It's 650 milliamps right now. Now it drained to zero. That only took about 20 seconds of draining and the green LED blinks here just a few times. I think that was like six or eight blinks only. It draws it at 1.3 amps. One hour, 10 minutes later, it steps down a little bit. That looks like 1.1 amps. And then towards the end over here, it drops down in steps one at a time, all the way to two hours, it's at zero. So assuming it was 5.677 volts, which I measured at the beginning, you can get about 3.35 watt hours out of the batteries. The rated specification is 4.15 watt hours. There's a 20% discrepancy here. It's likely due to the conversion of the internal lithium battery to the 1.5 volts. Usually the conversion efficiency is indeed somewhere between 80 and 90%. So it's on the low end of things. So the usable energy is actually 3.35 watts if you're drawing at 1.3 amps or so. If you guys are in need of some high drain AA batteries, check out this XTAR L4 battery and battery charger combo. I have an Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.